In this video, we're going to show how to use MATLAB to solve a second order ordinary differential equation. To do that, we'll show how to formulate the problem in a state space formulation. That is, we'll convert one second order ordinary differential equation to two first order ordinary differential equations because that is, that is the language that MATLAB uses to solve these types of problems. We'll examine the step response of a system and show how different parameters lead to fundamentally different responses of the system. And we'll use the mass spring damper that we developed in previous videos as our example problem. To recap our mass spring damper, our mass spring damper problem, we had a mass that was supported by a spring with spring constant k and a damper with a damping coefficient that we called sigma. Now we used uh, an automobile suspension system as the example for this uh, derivation. And what we said is that as the road moves up and down, as you have potholes or bumps or whatever, the axle of the, vehicle, of the wheel moves with the motion u of t. And we wanted to see what the reaction of the vehicle or the mass was. And we called that x of t. The governing equation for this system was shown to be m times the second derivative of x with respect to t plus sigma times dx dt plus kx was equal to k times u plus sigma times du dt. Now for this particular problem, what we want to solve is the solution for what's known as a step response. So you could think of this as the, uh, the, the car, if you want to think of it as a suspension system. But u is going to be 0, and then it's going to jump up to a value of 1, and then continue as, uh, continue as a constant from there on out from all time. And what we want to see is what happens to x of t when we do this. Now, you can see we have a du dt term here on the right-hand side of the equation. And if we have a step response here in u, that uh, du dt at that point in time would have to be infinite. And that would cause um, significant issues for solving this particular problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this jump at t equal, whoops, t equal to 0. And we're going to look at what happens to x of t, where t equal to what we'll call 0 plus. So we're going to look at what happens just as the system is to the right of this jump. And when that happens, then we can conveniently ignore this du dt term because it will be uh, zero because you will be constant from there on out. So then let's rewrite the equation by first dividing through by m so that our highest order derivative is uh, has no coefficient out in front of it. So we'll write the second derivative of x with respect to time plus sigma over m dx dt plus k over m x equals k over m times u. Now, as I mentioned, this is a, a, a second order ordinary differential equation, and we need to convert it to two first order ordinary differential equations. In general, if you have an nth order differential equation, so an equation where we have the nth derivative could be 5, it could be 20, it could be 2 with respect to uh, time, plus another derivative, for example, d n minus 1 x, d t n minus 1, plus dot, 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 x equals some forcing function u, where there are some coefficients. Um, we'll call this a1 all the way up to a uh, n minus 1. Uh, we know that in general we can convert an nth order ordinary differential equation to a series of n first order differential equations.
Right now we're going to concern ourselves with just a second order differential equation, so we'll remove the uh, general case. So what we'll end up with eventually are a set of equations of the form, for example, dz1 dt is equal to some coefficient times z1 plus some coefficient times z2 plus some coefficient times u and another equation that will be the derivative of z2 with respect to time is equal to uh, another coefficient times z1 plus a last coefficient our final coefficient times z2 plus another coefficient times u it may not seem obvious how to do this for a higher order or ordinary differential equation but in general there's a, a pretty straightforward procedure to to accomplishing this task and the first thing that we do is we write z1 and we just say that's going to be equal to our dependent variable in our original equation so it's going to be equal to x and then we'll define z2 as the derivative of z1 with respect to time which means it's also equal to dx dt which for our particular problem means it's equal to velocity now of course if you're dealing with electronic circuit, it may be voltage or current or something like that. And here it just happens to be velocity. So if this is the case, we can see immediately that dz1 dt can be written as dz, we just flip it to the other side, dz1 dt is equal to, I'll write it out explicitly here, 0 times z1 plus um, 1 times z2 plus 0 times u. That is, we've just taken um, this equation right here and flipped it over and matched up the coefficients with our form that we've uh, established up at the top. So we can write dz2 dt. Well, that's just equal to d d t of d z one d t substituting in what we know for z two uh, into this equation here. Well, that's just equal to the second derivative of x with respect to time because z one is equal to x, and so that is just equal to what we had for our original equation, which is minus k over m x minus sigma over m dx dt plus k over m u. Now x is just z1 and dx dt, well that's just dz1 dt, which means that that is just z2. And so we can write this equation as dz2 dt is equal to minus k over m z1 minus sigma over m z2 plus k over m u. And I left some space here so that I could go back and write dz1 dt is just equal to z2 from above. So in general, what you'll find is when you convert a higher order ordinary differential equation, you'll just set, excuse me, you'll set the, uh, you'll set z1 equal to your dependent variable and then define z2, z3, z4, as many as you need to as derivatives of the previous variable and then you'll end up with one equation at the bottom that, uh, that is your governing equation in terms of all of the new variables z that you have. Now we can rewrite this in a matrix formulation or a linear algebra formulation which actually makes it easier to input this, uh, th this problem into MATLAB. So to do that, and you should have seen this in your ordinary differential equations class, we can write things in terms of vectors and matrices. So we can write ddt z1 z2 is equal to 
0, 1, minus k over m, minus sigma over m, times z1, z2, plus 0, 1, oops, not a 1, plus 0 times k over m times u. So this is just shorthand notation for writing the two differential equations we have up here. We see that d1, d z1 dt is just equal to 0 times z1 plus 1 times z2 plus 0 times u. That's exactly what we have here. And dz2 dt is equal to minus k over m times z1 minus sigma over m times z2 plus k over m times u. This is known as a state space representation of our system. And in general, we call this matrix here of constants here A, and this vector here that multiplies our input U as B. Now there's one final thing we have to do before we can put this into MATLAB, and, and that is to define what we want as the output. Now, as we mentioned before, if u of t is our input, we are interested in what happened to x, the position of the mass over time, as the output. So what we write is, we can write another equation that looks something like this, where we take z1 and z2, and we multiply them by a horizontal row vector that picks out uh, what we want as an output. So in this case, we would write this as 1 and 0. So our output is going to be 1 times z1 plus 0 times z2, which means that we're just going to get x as our output. There's also a final um, uh, matrix that's needed in MATLAB, which is how the, uh, how the value of u directly affects the output. And for all intents and purposes, for our problems here, this will always be 0. So in MATLAB, or gen in general state space representations, we typically call this vector C, and this, uh, this value here is D. If, on the other hand, you're interested in the velocity as the output, you would define C as 0, 1, because then it would be 0 times the position plus 1 times the velocity. And depending on your problem, your uh, C may be, uh, just have a single one in it, or it may have some combination of all of the uh, values of Z, uh, depending on the physics of that particular problem. Now let's move to MATLAB, and we will work, uh, and we'll, we'll input this example into MATLAB and produce a step plot of one solution to show how it's done. Let's define our uh, variables here. And we'll say that k is equal to 10 newtons per meter. That the mass is equal to 2 kilograms. And that sigma, which I'll call s, is equal to 4 newtons per meter per second. If you remember correctly, the solution is depend the, the nature of the solution, whether it's oscillatory, whether you get sines and cosines or just exponentials, is equal to uh, is determined by the value of the quantity um, sigma divided by two m squared minus k divided by m. And when this value was negative, which it is in this case, we expect to get sines and cosines. In, in other words, we expect to get a, an oscillatory solution in, in, some, uh, in some manner. So we'll define our uh, matrices as we did before. In MATLAB, we define a matrix using the square brackets. And our matrix was A was equal to 0, 1 in the first row semicolon to start a new row, and the second term was minus k divided by m, or the second row was minus k divided by m, and then minus sigma divided by m. B 
was equal to 0 in the first row and k divided by m in the second row. c was equal to 1 in the first column and 0 in the second column. And finally, d was equal to just the empty, uh, just an empty vector. Once we've defined our matrices for our coefficients for the problem, we can define in MATLAB what's called a state space system, which basically is, is a way that MATLAB uh, uses these matrices to represent the physics of the problem. And we'll call it my state space equals and then you call the function state space or SS and whoops and then you just feed it a B C and D in order and MATLAB will then return the matrices so that you can go and check them and make sure that they uh, meet up with what you had um, before so the really nice part about MATLAB is that in order to find the step response, we don't have to go and write, uh, write a script that returns the derivatives and does all these calculations for us. MATLAB speaks the language of state space systems, and all we have to do is type step, the name of our state space system, state space system, and hit return. And lo and behold, it produces a figure for us that shows us the response as we've defined it over time given the unit input. If you recall, our input was to set u to jump u equals to 1 instantaneously, and as you would expect, eventually x would become 1 as well, um, because the spring would eventually come back to equilibrium. And because the system uh, has an oscillatory part of the solution, we get this overshoot and then oscillations, but uh, as, the, uh, as the damping eventually uh, makes the system settle down. And this is known as an underdamped system, and we'll explore the difference between underdamped and overdamped and critically damped systems in another video.